Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. Beloved in the Lord, our Savior Christ, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood as a sign and pledge of his love for the continual remembrance of the sacrifice of his death and for a spiritual sharing in his risen life. For in these holy mysteries, we are made one with Christ and Christ with us. We are made one body in him and members one of another. Having in mind, therefore, his great love for us and in obedience to his command, his church renders to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, never-ending thanks for the creation of the world, for his continual providence over us, for his love for all mankind, and for the redemption of the world by our Savior Christ, who took upon himself our flesh and humbled himself even to death on the cross, that he might make us the children of God by the power of the Holy Spirit and exalt us to everlasting life. To Christ our Lord who loves us and washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory in the church evermore. Through him, let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise, which is our bounden duty and service, and with faith in him, come boldly before the throne of grace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who shall eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
Let us read responsively by whole verse, Psalm 116, verses 1 and 10 through 17, as identified in your bulletin. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that because we have met together here today, life may grow greater for those who have lost faith in it, simpler for those who are confused by it, more secure for those who would escape it, happier for those who may be tasting the bitterness of it, safer for those who are feeling the peril of it, more friendly for those who are feeling the loneliness of it, and holier for all to whom life may have lost its dignity, its beauty, and its meaning. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Monday Thursday holds a unique place in the liturgical calendar, serving as a gateway into the Paschal Tritium, the three holy days leading to Easter. On this day, we gather not in the shadow of the cross, but at the table of the Lord, remembering the Last Supper, an event that encapsulates the heart of our Christian faith. In the Episcopal tradition, the Book of Common Prayer provides a rich tapestry of liturgical resources that guide our worship and reflection through these coming days. The exhortation, a portion of which we read at the beginning of our service, is a poignant part of our liturgy, and it invites us to approach this sacred time with humility, repentance, and a deep desire for communion with Christ and with one another. Today, as we gather at noon, in the brightness of the day, rather than the shadows of the evening, we are reminded that the light of Christ is ever-present, illuminating our path even as we recall the events of that night, that last supper, so long ago. Though we will not partake in the washing of feet at this service, it stands as a powerful symbol of service and love. We, at this noonday service, turn our focus to the intimacy of the Last Supper, where Jesus, knowing what was to come, chose to institute Holy Eucharist. The exhortation in our prayer book reminds us that this sacrament is not just a ritual to be observed, but a means of grace, a real and tangible way Christ has given us to remember his sacrifice, to participate in his resurrection, and to feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is a call to examine our lives, to repent of our sins, and to embrace a new commandment, to love one another as Christ loved us. This commandment, from which Monday Thursday gets its name, invites us into a life of sacrificial love and service, mirroring the love that Christ shows us. As we reflect on the Last Supper, we are drawn into the intimacy of a moment that transcends time. Jesus sharing the bread and the cup with his disciples invites us also to be part of this communion. In doing so, Christ reveals the depth of his love and the reality of his presence among us. This meal, this sharing of bread and wine, it becomes a model for our lives as Christians calling us to live in communion with Christ and one another, to be broken and poured out in love for the world. 
in a world fraught with division and heartache. The message of Monday Thursday speaks powerfully to our need for connection, for reconciliation, and for a love that transcends all barriers. It calls us to remember that at the heart of our faith is a table, not a battlefield, a meal, and not a contest. At this table, we find our true identity as followers of Christ, called to serve love in his name. So as we gather today, let us approach this holy sacrament with reverence and awe, mindful of the great mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us also recommit ourselves to living out the commandment to love one another, finding in this Eucharist the strength and grace we need to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. Amen. on the cathedral prayer list. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not helped you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of their Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. For those of you who are feeling ambitious, 7 p.m. tonight, we'll have our second Monday Thursday service of the, um, of the day. And it will be different. So, you know, try it out. Or just go to bed early. This does, in fact, mark the beginning of our triduum. So if you go to the very last page of your bulletin, you may notice something. There's no concluding blessing, and there is no dismissal. There's no end to this service. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the great vigil of Easter are all one big service spread throughout three days. I cannot encourage you enough to make your way to those services. And if the vigil is hard, Easter morning would suffice. But to get the full flavor the full message of what it is to make our way with Christ to the cross, to death, to resurrection. You really need it all. After all, what is the resurrection without the cross? And what is the cross without this meal? We need it all, and I cannot encourage you enough to participate fully as Christ participates fully with you. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another.
Cleanse me of my iniquities, O Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 